I, with another sister of mercy, who did not want me to go alone, uh, Judy Carl, we went to San Diego. In the coming few months, we interviewed about 85 people on both sides of the border. Is this a dream or is this something that is a real need? And that's what I heard. This is a real need. Since then, September 1 of 2020, six of us formed what we call Casa de Misericordia, House of Mercy. And we call it House of Mercy because our founder, Irish woman, Catherine McCauley, way back in 1831, as they got started, she called them Houses of Mercy. And so we created Casa de Misericordia, six of us, one layman, two laywomen, three sisters of mercy make up that community. We really had big dreams of spending days in Tijuana or at the border being of service in whatever degree we were able because some of us had to have you know, full-time paying jobs. COVID hit and that really impacted us. However, I want to jump to um, a very impactful experience. And I want to talk to you, hoping someday I meet you in San Diego, that I can, and members of my community, can accompany you to at least day experiences at the border. Right now, again, our actual active interaction with migrant persons who are the focus of this community. Our actual interaction is more limited largely because of COVID. Thank God COVID is lifting. Um, but you may have read and heard on the news about within a month of uh, Joe Biden being inaugurated, the border, the Southern border started to ease up. And at about that time, we expected about 1,400 unaccompanied minor girls at the San Diego Convention Center. We weren't sure when, we thought it was a Saturday. And after dinner this one Saturday evening, uh, Mary Kay, one of our community members said, does anybody want to walk down to the convention center? Let's go see what's happening. We got down there only to meet all the TV stations. All the cameras were there. Activity, nothing had happened. It was about 7.30 at night. So we stayed. About 9.30 at night, uh, one of three buses came immediately surrounded by federal police, not border patrol, but federal police. We never saw anybody get out. We could see kind of mid-calf to their feet. That's all we could see as the girls disembarked. Um, a wonderful man named Enrique Morones was there. We made signs that said, amor, bienvenida, we love you. Welcome. Two of us, Mary Kay and I, both Sisters of Mercy, immediately applied to volunteer. That was March. We just got formal approval about two weeks ago and we weren't alone. The approval process was thorough and um, challenging. However, somehow a Lutheran minister who was in charge of the the spiritual needs of the girls who um, probably by that time there were 1,300 to 1,400 girls. I get a phone call from Reverend Bill Raditz and he said, Sister Mary, do you know what rosaries are? I said, I do. He said, can you get me some? I can, I said, how many do you need? <laughs> he said, a thousand. Without a blink, I said, sure. And I said, my one manipulation of you, Reverend Raditz, is that if I get the rosaries, I and another sister of mercy get to hand them out. He agreed. 
Thanks to the Diocese of San Diego Mission Department, Mary Kay and I went to the convention center with 1,100 rosaries. You know, the plastic rosaries and, well, and a woman who accompanied us because we were not yet approved. She said, you will be watched this, and your behavior will be judged whether or not you can come again. So of course we were on good behavior. We get in there, they gave us a cart, you know, the kind of cart you can push, but it's kind of lower where you put the goods. So we laid the rosaries out rather sloppily, but we laid them out. I tell you, if any of you have been in, I don't know, maybe even farmer's market here, but I immediately thought of uh, market day in Tijuana and as the girls saw the rosaries, they flocked and they were holding them up. You know, was it the right color? Even some of them wanted a certain kind of cross. It had to fit over their heads. It was magnificent. And Mary Kay and I just watched. Then we walked across um, areas San Diego Convention Center has been commended for the care and the cleanliness with which they have kept the place. So we were walking across what they call one of the pods, meaning 50 to 60 cots neatly arranged are there and the girls sleep in pods of 50 or 60 a night. And in the middle of the pods on a cot sitting cross-legged Indian style was a young girl be, you know, praying the rosary. I was rather touched. Um, these girls uh, at that time were between 11 and 17 years old. And then we got to another part in the same, every corner of the convention center we went to, the girls just piled in and the adults, las lineas, las lineas, make lines and more or less they did. This one girl stood up and she had a rosary. She had her fist like this, but I could see her rosary. And I just looked at her and she came and stood next to me. And I thought she was just standing there waiting for other girls. So I turned and looked at her. I don't, I hope I don't cry. Rivers, not trickles, rivers were flowing down her cheeks. Not a word, rivers. So I said to her in Spanish, where are you from? El Salvador. And the, the rivers just kept flowing. And I noticed a few girls kind of beginning to hang around us. And, you know, I, I didn't know what to do. And I said to her, in Spanish, may I bless you on your forehead? Yes, she nodded. So I just put a cross and in Spanish I said, I bless you with this cross and I bless you with peace. And she stood there, I stood there and I looked around and these five or seven girls all lined up and I had to give them each a blessing. We are now, Mary Kay and I are formally approved. I wish you could come, but you have to go through all this, you know, safe network of approvals. We're now at the convention center. We went with um, Bishop Bejerano, the newest Bishop in San Diego, Mexican by heritage. He was tremendous with the kids. And at the end of uh, the church service, he, you get, oh, he invited me to the mic again. He said, you know, hermana Mary, please speak to the girls. So whatever I said, all I remember is holding out my gray hair. And I said to the kids, I could be su abuela. I could be your grandmother and whatever blessing and wish. So after the services, it's customary. It's usually three or four people up on a stage area. And then we go down and we just space ourselves. And if the kids want to come, 
Well, the girls just came and came to all of us. But the one that impacted me the most was the one who came to me and said, Eres mi abuelita, you are my grandmother. And she just hugged me and she sobbed. And um, we are now, because we can now come in, we are asking what time of day would be the best time to come. And the people who are at the convention center, if you can come from about eight to midnight, because at nine o'clock we turn the lights out and you can hear crying throughout the center. And if you could bless the girls before they go to bed. So we'll do that. So that is a need. That is one piece that at least um, between two and four of, two of us can go in at any time. Four of us have been to the convention center. If any of you come, we would do our best to get your permissions. And with Bishop Bejerano, it's pretty easy. He's just a beloved man. I say that to you. I also say, just want to check the time. I also say um, two other needs that are growing. Um, and I say this with respect, and I, I know at least one of you is an attorney here. Um, you understand that we have to protect people. Um, first of all, in all the 85 needs assessment phone calls and in-person visits we could make, one of my phone calls because of COVID was with Sister Ann Durst, a sister of the Society of the Holy Child Jesus out of Philadelphia. She and another sister in 1991 founded what is called the Casa Cornelia Legal uh, Immigration Center, meant to be of service to immigrants and refugees. And I remember interviewing her just to see what a legal side would say. <laughs> she was great. If, if she ever hears this, I hope she says I say this with respect. She said, Mary, I'm 82 years old. I'm an attorney. I also have an advanced degree in theology. And I tell you and your community to go to the front door and look out. The migrants are hiding right in front of you. I know that's here in San Francisco too. It's definitely in San Diego. And what we're noticing maybe is a sign of growing trust and confidence in us. More and more people very quietly are saying, will you help me get papers? Um, one time we had an experience of somebody coming to the door speaking no English, saying they told me you could help me. And what that has meant um, is different with each person who comes to our door. I say all of this to you um, because right now the California-Mexico border opens periodically. It's, it's unpredictable. Uh, we have made very good connections with Casa de los Pobres right in Tijuana. And right now we can't even take clothes. We can't take anything secondhand. It will not go through the border. Um, the sisters who run that um, Casa de los Pobres uh, say what is needed. It would be cash. There's uh, so much robbery on the Tijuana side of the border that um, Sister Armida told me one man came to her and said, Sister, will you give me 53 US dollars? I need that to take the bus to my home state and Puebla. I would rather die there where people know me than be killed here. Um, I'm also learning, and this really touches me, and um, especially you women religious here, um, because of the work uh, American women religious are doing. I have learned that the gang members who follow the people across the border are now saying there is more money in human trafficking than there is in drugs. So the kidnapping of young women and young men is accelerated. And to think um, 
what those stories are. The unaccompanied women at the convention center, I was very politely told, um, Mary, some of the girls who arrive are pregnant, not by their choice. These are realities that I, I suspect every single one of you is familiar with. For some reason, I feel called, the community of Casa de Misericordia is called, and we are doing our very best to be of service. Right now, I know, I know especially members of the MAS community would love to come and volunteer. And right now, the volunteering is, is close to nothing at the moment. Um, we can't even accept clothes. Catholic Charities, Jewish Family Services, South Bay Community Services are the major players. And they have said to all of us, uh, sometimes especially to me, please no clothes, no toys till at least the end of June. Because the generosity, once President Biden eased border closures, and people began to come. The generosity of women religious, of everybody, was truly overwhelming. Um, these are the uh, realities we're living with. I suspect Mike or Don, or Robert, maybe Robert Nolan, somebody may likely put in the chat where, if you wish, you can donate. But I want to stop talking and I want to invite comments, questions, answers, um, because this story is not about me. It's about us. Today is the feast of the body of Christ. This makes me cry when I realize that. We are one. You know, in those letters, uh, St. Paul wrote of we are one, one all suffer. When one suffers, we all suffer. So how can we strengthen our commitment? One thing I thought of as I was walking from liturgy over here with Annette was thinking about those girls at nine o'clock when the lights go out and the chaperones can hear the crying. I just thought I want to start either praying at nine o'clock or when I go to bed to pray in solidarity with those girls. So you can see what uh, Robert will put up as ways to uh, connect with us. But I, um, however we want to do questions and answers, um, they might show up uh, to everybody. No, I'm seeing the donation. Truly raise your hand and unmute yourself and let's talk. Sister Mary, what are some things that we can send that would be helpful for you that would be portable that you could take from your house to the convention center when you're visiting with the girls? Thanks, Maura. Even at the convention center, um, we have trouble. What I say works, um, and forgive me, but it's true. It has to be brand new, still in the package. Um, the girls, thanks to initial donations, I believe through Costco, I don't know if people paid, but they, the girls are, are looking good. Um, if you send clothes or shoes, what I notice is though they are between 11 and 17, and for a while, they were as young as five. And we also now have, um, I'd say right now at the last time I was there, there were about 1,100 unaccompanied minors in the convention center. I'd say of the 1,100, about 25 were young boys. They were the brothers of the girls as they came across um, and, and I have met only girls from El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala. They have walked that distance. 
So um, it has to be brand new, even when we take it. They, we don't get to walk into the convention center with it. We will give it to the chaperone, the people in charge, and they will take it. Um, but Maura, thank you. That's, that's what I know now. And it would be the same when we can go into Tijuana or when I can give it to Sister Armida and Sister Maru, who are directors uh, at Casa de los Pobres, brand new um, packages have an easier chance of getting across the border. Some migrant groups have run letter writing campaigns uh, when they're working with groups in detention in community like this. Are you able to take letters or cards in when you're visiting with the girls? Well, if they're written, and Maura, I noticed you put something in that has my address. Thank you for doing that. Any of you who want to write letters, if you would put it to um, I'm just trying to think of the first line on the envelope, maybe to the girls, attention, Mary Waskoviak. You can look at what Maura has put in the chat room. It has my last, well, you can see my spelling of my last name and my home address. And if you do that, I will take those unopened to the convention center. And I'm happy to say I, uh, I get to go um, more often than just when we get the every other Sunday, Catholics can have a service. The other thing to tell you, FYI, you may hear July 15th is supposedly the closing date of the convention center for unaccompanied minors. Bishop Bejerano tells me that that will be true. They will no longer be able to keep a thousand girls there, but there will be another space. Uh, I, he does not know how many will be able to continue at the convention center. And I tell you the when you walk through the convention center, you can see um, a whole place for mental health workers, which is a growing need. The depression is growing, um, but there's a whole area where people are making phone calls, trying to get girls connected to their families and host families and churches in the US. So, um, those envelopes probably will go there. So thank you for that, Maura. Looks like Jean, you had your hand up and then Annette. To, uh, unmute yourself, Jean. It's great to see you. Thank you. Uh, Mary, thank you first for, um, you're really careful listening to us, but also you're careful listening to, of course, God and, and listening to the people that you walk among. So I want to thank you. That's a wonderful sign for us and, and a way for us to pay attention to all of those elements in our lives. My question is, how many of those girls will be able to um, be reunited with family members here? Do you have any idea? Or are a large percentage of them looking uh, for foster homes? And how long do most of the girls stay in the center? So three questions having to do with how long they stay, how many of them might be fostered into families and uh, uh, rather a, a reunited with families and how many fostered? Yeah. Um, I don't know the number of um, how many can go to relatives and how many are going to foster homes. Uh -huh. I don't know that number. I do, um, and you're probably used to hearing this, the girls have traveled with the names of family and the contact mm -hmm. um, and that's what I hear more often that um, at the convention center, they're trying to connect them with family. Mm -hmm. So I, because I hear that more often, I don't know if that's because it's the majority. Mm -hmm. um, but I also know that um, churches and religious congregations are um, making themselves available. Um, about how long can the girls stay? What I heard um, is that 
originally the length of time the girls could stay was 35 days. Oh, uh -huh. So within 35 days, they have got to be um, connected to family um, or the host community. Again, um, I'm not sure how tightly that's being held. I just observe how hard the adults are working. Um, may I go back to one thing when I was saying new, new brand new packages and all that. Um, think about this, what I heard and what I've witnessed is if there is some small toy, some small stuffed animal, um, the kids hold on to that like it's their little brother or sister. Um, it's beautiful. Again, has to be brand new, has to be packaged and, and not taken out of packaging. Just crossed my mind, so I say it to you. Um, Annette had a question. Yes. I don't see you. There you yes. are, Annette. Mary, I think they'd be interested in the other programs that you're offering. For example, the one that offers emotional and spiritual support. Would you tell them about those programs? Here, here at um, Casa de Misericordia, the six of us are very committed to the migrant person. And what can we do? Uh, something that we've done um, because COVID so tied our hands is we have, um, connected with long timers in the parish. One of the women grew up in the parish, um, then worked for, and, and um, I, I don't believe, can't remember, she's one of eight children. She's now 72 years old. Um, I forget if she was born in Mexico or here, but her family's back and forth. Um, we, the two of us are the co-directors of something called um, the Community Resource Center. And we are providing um, immediate service to people who have been impacted by COVID because our zip code had the most COVID related, uh, the most COVID cases and the most COVID deaths um, than other county zip codes. We also, um, oh, mainly that, oh, and the most COVID related job losses because our people are in restaurant, hospitality, housekeeping, construction, and that got shut down. And that is going well. The, the County of San Diego Human Health and Human Services heard about this resource center. We only open it two days a week. It's starting small, but we have the services of a bilingual social worker who is 100% a member of the Casa de Misericordia community, heart and soul and profession, she gets us. So that's there, but the programs that we're partnering with are three. One, of course, ESL, and that has the most signups. Um, and Sean Ferry and Sister Gloria Mary are the two leaders of English as a second language. And um, we're meeting the people little by little. And I could tell you stories there, but I'll wait just in case. The other one that we do that you referred to, Annette, is called Sanar, de, Sanar Las Heridas del Corazón, Healing Heart Wounds. And we have opened it to anyone who desires healing of maybe the experience of migrating to the US, maybe domestic violence, um, whatever it is. And um, three of us, two of us are English speaking by first language and one is Spanish speaking by first language. It's a small intimate group. Um, the people are more at home in their mother tongue, which is Spanish and um, very touching. It's uh, a program out of the Trauma Healing Institute. Any of you could look it up. Um, we have modified it, uh, we are trained in it, but we've modified it to fit the needs of our people. And what I notice is the healing people are seeking is healing of their past. 
And, um, you know, I, I need to respect confidentiality. One of the more recent ones is a young man, um, you know, under 35, let's say, and who very strongly speaks out. The more I grow, the more I realize I can be a social worker, I can help my people, but I can only help my people if I can get healed. And then he names the specific things he lived through and he did as a younger person. But whatever he has gone through to find his own personal healing, he wants to make available, he's powerful. So that's going on. And then the other one that's fun um, and productive is a community garden. If you come down to San Diego, I can't wait to give you a walking tour. Part of our walking tour is about a block away, owned by the parish, is a plot of land that is becoming a community garden. So on Wednesday evenings and Saturday mornings, we have families. You should see the three and five-year-olds with shovels. It's just amazing. And right now, after um, a, oh, maybe a month ago now, I'm getting landfill um, compost from the free landfill here in San Diego. Um, let me just put it in big quotation marks. I say to friends, I consider you friends, I shoveled shit for three hours because we had to prepare the soil. And I was doing it with a three-year-old and with kids and with adults and was most touched when this one man with four children and his wife, all six of them did that. And, and the men and boys ended up you know, turning it over into the soil better than uh, most of us could. But as he drove away, he said, thank you. And I thought, I can't believe you're thanking me. But that community garden is coming along and um, the people, we're not dividing it up yet at the advice of uh, other uh, community garden farmers. It's starting out as a full piece, but this one little guy, David, David's in maybe third grade. David has a list. He wants broccoli, he wants lettuce, and he wants tomatoes. So I hope to God that, that community garden <laughs> includes that because David wants that. So thanks, Annette, for the question. You're welcome. Um, any other questions, comments? I just want to quickly. Mary. Adele, I'll think. Ad uh, Annette, yeah? Would this be a good time to show your PowerPoint? I Is think the time? visuals would help our audience. Good. I think Robert or Don or somebody's going to do that. So I made you co-host, Mary, but um, I can I can try to pull it up if you if you don't have it handy. I don't have it handy. Okay, I Just was eight, trusting eight you. seconds, Thank and I'll I'll get that pulled up for everyone. It's kind of our story from the beginning till now. Well, wow, that's coming up. I just want to make sure you all know how grateful I am to be in your midst. And uh, please feel free to contact me. Um, it's just a pleasure, a pleasure to see you. Mary? Yeah? Can I throw a question your way? Yeah? What, what can we do as distant admirers of your extraordinary work at the border, what can we do for you and your sisters? Oh, you're so be, sweet. That would be most useful, helpful, supportive 
of the marvelous endeavor that you are in? You know, um, thank you for the question. And I purposely didn't put it as um, a choice you might have should you send donations if you're at a distance. If you wish, just know um, our CASA community did talk about um, we have to watch our budgets. You know, we each pay into our monthly rent and utilities and food, you know, all of that. We're living as simply as we can. Um, and we have said to the parish, anything that needs to be done, we will take care of, which is, I keep looking for friends. I have many friends helping us, but donations that might say greatest need instead of uh, children or instead of, I didn't emphasize the legal help. I told a story, but the legal, the need for financial assistance for legal help is growing. Um, and if, you know, if we ever had donations that said greatest need, it might be for something in our community, but it might be an unmet need that makes itself known because we're still unraveling the needs of the migrant people. Um, so I hope that helps. And Can everyone I, see my screen now? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, please come on I, um, okay. and let's do the can, uh, visual. This, can everyone see the screen? I can. Great, okay. Beautiful. A Franciscan sister, Marianne Seg. Um, Marianne lives in Joliet and follows us closely. It's beautiful. My friends, anything else? Rich. Hi, Mary. Um, Hi. Where do you see, um, looking at the post COVID situation, um, where do you see? Um, our community here 
gathered today, um, being able to, um, what, what do you see as the next focus and the impact on our community in a post COVID world, hopefully? Your community, meaning solidarity community, or just all of us? All here? of us here, I mean, starting with all of us here attending this um, presentation. That's a great question, Rich. Uh, you make me say something I forgot. Right now, um, this, uh, it's called South Bay Community Services. Uh, we have the kids, the girls at the convention center. However, the state of California um, in responding to somewhat of a surge of uh, migrant folks coming over is no longer allowing congregate shelters. So um, they have assigned certain hotels to Jewish family services, certain hotels to um, Catholic charities. Those hotels become places where we could be of service. Some of it, um, I have two sister friends, uh, religious of Jesus and Mary. They go in and they're willing to drive people to the airport or to buses so that they can connect with uh, where they will ultimately end up. But they're also going to simply be a presence in case people want the blessings I was talking about or they want somebody to talk to, somebody to pray with them. Um, so those will continue to stay open for a while. I'm in strong, good contact with the executive director of Catholic Charities, Vino Pajanor, and he is always a good resource for me on what needs are. Um, perhaps as the border opens, and we have to really monitor this, um, we may do day trips into Tijuana, into the, sh uh, the shelters. Uh, if any of you think of that, I would strongly urge you to get sentry cards or global entry cards because even with um, global or sentry cards, it could be a four to eight hour wait to just walk back across the border. We are not planning to take vehicles um, just for complexity of reasons, but we are willing to go ourselves. Um, we will be advised pretty strictly um, on that. The other, um, the other thing, and I'd say this to you, uh, to all of us as a community, in our sense of helplessness, what we have begun to, well, what we have been doing, we haven't begun it, we've been doing Sunday afternoons. Right now we're driving down to the border. It's about 12, 12 miles, but we tend to go to where the border wall meets the ocean. It was in one of the slides Marianne has. For me, it's a very moving place because it shows me that the wall does end at some point, but that's where people are swimming around, taking boats. Um, we go down there and we just pray. And even then, when more than four of us stand together at the border, border patrol comes over and tells us to disperse. And you know we'll walk slowly away. So we know we're being watched, but even to go down and pray at the border. I mean, when I saw um, Mary Kay and Judy Carl praying at the border in front of those barbed wires, that's real, that's real. So um, those things immediately come to mind, Rich. Um, if any one of you want, please stay in contact with me and say to me, Mary, what else is going on? Or we're coming down and I will do my best to connect you. But right now until there's, and it may be after June 15th when um, Governor Newsom lifts some of the COVID bans. I, I'm not sure what that will look like. Um, it may be helpful. Um, so at the moment, I think that's the best. Although Rich, I look at you and I, I, I wonder what kind of services, um, the presence of legal experience, not that you would do any direct help, but I wonder each one of you look at what your gifts are and what could you do? You know, your presence, your prayer, um, 
you know, your practical hands-on as it can happen. Let's see what is possible. Um, and Mary, I right. noticed that this was recorded. And so is the recording available for us to refer people to? Looking over at Robert Nolan, speak yes. to us, Robert. Yes, we will. We'll make this available um, on our website and our YouTube channel. Um, so maybe what I can do is also, since I have all of your emails from registration, I can also circulate that when it's ready. If thank, you. thank you. And thank you, Mary, very much. And from all of your holy name, sisters, contacts, we say thank oh, you. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I see it's 12 and my hunch is it's time to go, but I cannot thank you enough. Annette, oh. thank you for making this possible. Robert, thank you. Thank you, everybody. And, you know, my San Bruno friends, you saw me growing up. And... Mary, our thanks are to you. I know that I can speak on behalf of everyone who joined us this morning when I express our deep gratitude to you and your community for the yes. important work you were doing at the border.